guys sorry to interrupt your video just a quick plea subscribe to my channel please if you haven't done it already subscribe tell your friends subscribe thanks for ages i have been telling my students to watch blue light aware which is the old video and i was going to go and show you this but there's a new one so i thought i'll do a new one obviously they're using funky weird graphics that don't quite work like for instance if you look in this little bit here these three cars smash into the barrier look at this so you should only go onto the hard shoulder if you have an emergency of your okay. own if there is no okay. hard shoulder Bang. with three lanes being used Bang. make way for the emergency so obviously don't do that and when these little cars are flying around they're skidding around corners i don't think the emergency services drive like that however it makes for an entertaining watch so uh but Pay attention, obviously, these are the rules, and if an emergency vehicle turns up on the driving test, you are supposed to go with whatever is written in here. So don't break laws, no driving in bus lanes, no crossing double white lines, no jumping through red lights. You do not break laws to help emergency services. You wait until a suitable place, pull over, let them go. But watch the video, absorb it, man, because we don't know on any of the lessons or in any of the tests or anything like that when an emergency vehicle will turn up so um learn police cars ambulances fire engines as drivers we've probably all experienced situations where the sirens are wailing and the blue lights are flashing by keeping calm and knowing what to do we can ensure we stay safe and reduce any unnecessary delays for the emergency vehicle. If you hear a siren or see a blue light, look for somewhere safe to move left and stop. Keep going on the approach to a bend or on the brow of a hill, then pull over when there's a better view ahead. Stay out of bus lanes, keep off curbs and pavements, and don't stop near traffic islands. An emergency driver won't want you to go through a red traffic light. So don't break the law or take any risks by moving past the light. If you're first in the queue at a red light, stay where you are and leave the emergency vehicle to find its way around you. If you're approaching a roundabout or a junction and you see an emergency vehicle, look at its position as this will let you know where it wants you to go. If you're already at the junction, be patient and wait for it to come past. There may be more than one emergency vehicle approaching the junction, so check before moving off. On a stretch of road with solid white lines, an emergency vehicle will probably switch off its siren as it follows you. This is because the road layout is unsuitable for overtaking. Just want to highlight to you, if you're at a traffic light, an emergency vehicle comes up behind you, a big queue of cars, if it's unsafe for that emergency vehicle to go around you at the traffic light then they will also queue with the blue lights flashing but they take the sirens off they are not allowed to try and apply pressure to get you to go over the white line past the red traffic light because traffic from the sides don't know that there's an emergency vehicle there and so if you cross that line and then have a car crash the emergency vehicle that's behind you now has to deal with you which is defeats the whole point so you will often find if you're in traffic that an ambulance for instance will if he can't get around and go through like the diagram a minute ago uh, he will wait in the queue with his blue lights going but no siren and as soon as those lights go green the siren goes on we can all move and create a hole for them so keep going at the speed limit if it's safe until you're clear of the solid white lines when the siren goes on again, that's your cue to let it go past. On motorways and dual carriageways, pull over to the left to allow an emergency vehicle to pass in the outside lane if it's clear. In slow and stationary traffic, emergency vehicles may use the motorway's hard shoulder. So you should only go onto the hard shoulder if you have an emergency of your own. If there is no hard shoulder, with three lanes being used, Make way for the emergency vehicles by creating an emergency corridor, like this. Stay where you are, as other vehicles are likely to be coming through. On a smart motorway, one or more lanes may be closed because of an incident ahead. You'll know because of red X signs above the carriageway. Emergency vehicles will use these lanes if they can. 
It is illegal to drive in a lane showing a red X, so you should move safely into another lane. If no lanes appear to be closed, be prepared to create an emergency corridor. Rolling roadblocks like this are used where necessary by police and highways authority vehicles if there's an incident ahead. Stay behind these vehicles until they move left and the incident is over. Rest assured they'll get you moving again as soon as it's safe. Those highways agency, these ones, they are not law enforcers. So, for instance, if you were speeding, they can't stop you for it. There's no reason why they can't jump on the radio to the policeman that's further up the road and get him to stop you. But they aren't there to enforce laws. However, if they are lit and they give you an instruction, it is illegal to not follow their instructions. So in that one, it said, do not pass. If you went past, you have broken a law and you will be prosecuted for it. So whilst they're not there to enforce laws, if they tell you to do something, you have to comply. Here are some simple tips that will help keep you and everyone safe. Stay calm. Make a point of always scanning ahead and behind. This will give you more time to plan and that'll really help in an emergency. Don't break the law or take risks, however helpful you're trying to be. Emergency vehicles come in all shapes and sizes. So, when you pull over and every time you park, make sure there's a large enough space for any emergency vehicle to get through. Have a good look round and be aware of what everyone else is doing. Often there'll be more than one emergency vehicle coming. Listen for different sirens and look all around before moving off. By remaining aware and observant, we get more time to anticipate and plan. We're greatly reducing risks and who knows, maybe helping to save a life. There you go, emergency vehicles. So it isn't C1 jump out of the way, it's C1 start planning for a safe place to pull over and let him go past, but don't break any laws. My brother, for instance, failed his driving test about 120 years ago because an emergency vehicle turned up and he pulled into a bus lane to let the emergency vehicle go through. But remember, an emergency vehicle has the special dispensation. He's got the blue lights on, he's allowed to cross lines and do stuff. So he can drive in the bus lane if he wants to, but we're not allowed to um, drive in a bus lane. So we are not allowed to break a law to aid the police. They get the dispensation to do something a bit weird all right so let them do it you don't break any laws especially on your driving test just as a little word uh, I have seen on many a driving test where an emergency vehicle turns up and if it's getting a bit hectic the examiner will often step in and aid you and tell you just pull over here wait for, let him go and so on he'll give you a moment to make sure that you've seen it so make sure you are checking those mirrors all the time because you're driving along, there's an emergency vehicle behind you. The examiner knows there's an emergency vehicle behind you, but the question is, do you, are you trying to find a place to pull over in order to aid that emergency vehicle? They're checking for that. If you're keeping an eye on him and he can see you're looking for it, then he'll step in and say, just pull over here and it's all good. And then he'll say, when safe, drive on. But don't just drive on, make sure it's safe and then drive on. Alright? Winner.